the general guidance is that you should use the pencils. The pencil type you can use is the number two or HB pencils. Any pencil that is not light is not fine. Right? So those two are the only two pencils that are supposed to be used for the exam. You can also take erasers and pencil, get pencil sharpness to the exam hall, but you might have to take off the covers of them. You can also take in prescribed medicine, so you have to be careful enough to see whether you might need to take a prescribed medicine on the exam day, so be mindful of that. That's a week prior to the exam, but it's more intense once you get closer to the exam. So on a day be on the day before the exam, you'd have to sort of prepare a small bag with all the items. But then again, you'd have to remember that the exam hall is not a place that you can take your bag in. You'd have to either keep the you can keep your belongings in the personal belongings area or leave whatever you don't necessarily need in, in a vehicle or something. And it is recommended that you uh, be prepared to uh, be prepared to take take a scarf or a sweater. Even though the exam room is generally generally warm, but it can be cold on certain occasions. Like I can personally attest to this myself. It can I it can also be very very uh, loud at some time, so it's also recommended that you take some earplugs and stuff if it's possible. And then you can also take water bottles, wristwatches, but not smart watches. You can't take uh, these uh, Apple watches, Fitbits, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and uh, with COVID-19 related system, you'll have to take a mask. A mask is mandatory. The CFE Institute has not given guidance whether you can take a, a face shield, but a mask, if you need, you have to take one. And in fact, you can take five if you want. And this is just one from us. You might as well get a good night's sleep just before the day of the exam and instead of trying to do some last minute studies, because studies must have been done way before the last day of the exam. It's not the day before the exam that you should do your studies. And on the day before the exam, it might be, it is recommended that you learn the exam day schedule instead of trying to do some last minute study. And on the uh, day so of the exam, uh, yes. Uh, sorry, uh, if I just interject there, uh, two points uh, I also want to emphasize with regard to what to do uh, before uh, a week before as well as the day before. Uh, is uh, so one is uh, some guidance that we've been, uh, we've received from the CFA Institute as well uh, because we've been getting a lot of queries uh, particularly with regard to uh, for some of the candidates to come to the exam who, where they are living in like isolated or curfew areas uh, so the response we have got uh, from them uh, is that you know if they if you are facing some restriction uh, from going to the exam center uh, then you need to get the necessary permissions uh, from the police station. Uh, and uh, you and uh, if but if you're having any issues, uh, you would want to contact the global contact center, the CFA global contact center. Okay, uh, so you know, so even this week, you know, if you if you uh, if you feel there might be some disruption, uh, do uh, get in touch uh, with the police station. And uh, I think if you show your exam ticket and say this is for an exam, uh, this is for you to attend an exam, uh, there shouldn't be an issue. But uh, make sure you do that as well if you feel there is some uh, worry about that. And I think the second point is uh, with regard to uh, bags. Uh, I think this time, uh, because of the uh, the situation, I believe they are not. Uh, there is no separate uh, 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 place where you can leave your baggage. Uh, so you, uh, I think, what they will be doing is you can keep your bags under the desk uh, during the exam. Uh, so then make sure you know that it's not something that's bulky, and you know just take the the mini, the what, what is really required, the most essential things uh, for the exam. Okay, so just two points to emphasize. And yeah, and also just a reminder, if you have any questions, uh, please do send it in uh, via the chat uh, during the presentation. Okay, thanks. So on the day of the exam, you might have to pack your own lunch with around, because of COVID-19 restrictions, there won't be a lunch option available at the exam center this time around. And 
But the biggest point I want to emphasize today on the for the exam day is that you have to keep the end goal in mind. The end goal in mind is this is this certificate that you're going to receive after you pass the exams, right? So uh, most people go to the exam trying thinking that it's a networking event. They spend the entire 13 odd minutes they have before the exam speaking to their friends, uh, taking the last names to the functions on their calculator, just see the whether their calculator works and then end up going to the exam hall late. And keeping on that theme, uh, this is an infographic that, that made uh, to tell you how what you can and cannot take to the exam hall. You can be getting this slides so that you can check it out later. And then these are some COVID-19 related items we emphasized before as well. And I want to make sure that I want, uh, I, says, I emphasize that uh, you can't take anything in covering. So if, if your sanitizing gel bottle has a covering, you might have to remove the covering of it and take an empty, like a bottle without any covering. Same thing with PPE and everything. Uh, there are some recommended additional items you can take into the exam hall. Not that you have to take them, but it's, it's optional. Uh, the number one thing is a watch and tells you keep time during the exam, but uh, you have to make sure that it doesn't ring or make an alarm or have a chime of any sort. Smart watches, like I said before, the Apple watch, the Fitbit, and the Samsung watches are not allowed. And neither are desk clocks and timers. And like I said before, the, you, you might as well uh, try to wear clothes in layers because it gets cold in the exam all at times. And remember to carry your wallet. It is allowed to carry, keep your wallet on, under the table during the exam time. And you might, even though you can't buy lunch there at the exam, this time it's important to take it. And earplugs. This is a personal example from me. I, when I did level one somewhere in 2015, the exam hall was so loud that I would say it negatively impacted me personally. Uh, but uh, if I had earplugs at that time, it probably wouldn't have. And I carried earplugs the next two exams, for sure. We have that. And then these are some do's and don'ts for the exam. Uh, like I said, from the do side, try to bring your own lunch. And then there are some exam policies for, uh, for the, from the CFP student, the admission policy, the admission ticket policy, and then the admission and departure policy. And likewise, you have to add, uh, add, adhere to those to the letter. For example, you can't uh, go out of the exam hall earlier than the like you, can't, uh, you can exit the exam hall early and expect to come back to the afternoon session, for example. Right? And then uh, you sh ideally should come a bit early to the exam hall to check in bags. And, both, and this is for both the morning and the evening sessions. There are two sessions for the paper-based exams, at least. And then you have to be early uh, or at least on time for both sessions. We have noted that from, our, from the research that 5% of the candidates are late. And what happens is that if you're late for the exam, you'll be kept out of the exam hall for the time the exam instructions are in so that you won't know what the exam instructions are. So this is especially true if you're a level one candidate and you haven't uh, gone through the exam instructions ever, you'll then be at a loss because of that. And then if you have any exam related questions, you have to raise your hand and speak to a proctor, not your friend, not a exam proctor walking by, you can't just uh, speak to him, just raise your hand. That's all you have to do if you have a question. And on the don't side, well, obviously don't be late. And then this is one of the first things that, um, like the biggest thing that people forget, it's the exam ticket and calculator. Or the calculator, of course, you can borrow something, borrow, borrow a calculator before the exam. You can't borrow a calculator during the exam. That's strictly prohibited. But the exam ticket, you can't even borrow that right from another friend. Right? So don't forget those. 
and don't overpack. That's obvious. And then you shouldn't write anything on your exam ticket or the exam paper. Well, you can write on the exam paper during the exam, but don't write on the exam table or whether it's only the exam paper that you should write. And then uh, don't, under any circumstances, discuss the exam questions. This is true whether you are discussing them with your friends during the exam, after the exam, during the interval of the exam, or and, and especially on, not online. Like if you come after the exam and you think the question was hard or question was not relevant to the curriculum, you might have to take it on with the CFA Institute and not post it on a CFA forum or an analyst forum, for example. That is not allowed. And that is part of the agreement that you make with the CFA when you start in the exam. So keep that in mind. And like I said before, don't leave the exam hall early. That is not recommended. Neither will you be able to sit for the afternoon session if you leave the morning session early. And then uh, this is also important. Don't give the impression. Don't don't speak to a person, another person, whether it be a candidate or even a proctor. If it gives the impression that you are cheating, don't give the impression of cheating, or don't. Definitely don't cheat and don't give the impression of cheating either. And some general tips for the ex for exam success. Like you said, we named this before as general tips for the exam, but this is these are general tips for exam success. They are quite important. Uh, you should know ethics before you go into the exam. Now, most people think we are ethical people and, and we don't need to know your thing, but at least by this time, you should go through your ethics section as thoroughly as possible. And you should also try to learn how the minimum passing score is calculated and how you can fare, how you'd have to fare to, uh, in order to pass them. the minimum passing score generally hovers around uh, relatively high mark compared to other professional exams, but that's uh, guidance were given on the CF Institute website on how it's calculated. And you know, I think Travis can help, uh, Travis and Sandrika can help you if you can't find it on the website. And then uh, it is highly recommended, at least from me, uh, that you do uh, at least the minimum number of uh, mock papers that the average passing candidate finishes before the exam. I say to refer to 300hours.com for the post-exam research study for this. But if I remember correctly, it's about four to five, at least four to five. That that should be at least done. I mean, that's the average for a passing candidate. And then after you have done it, that you can use the learning outcome statements to check whether you have mastered the core areas of the curriculum. And what is most important and especially during this time is to keep yourself motivated by removing any negativity about this CFA program. It's difficult, you know, most people would say, when you say you're doing CFA, it's that, that is difficult. Well, while it is the case, you're taking on this challenge, the challenge that, uh, that you had to be motivated for. Having any sort of negativity on the exam day or the week before the exam is not ideal. And we'll be helping you with some of with some of our chart holders today to keep yourself motivated as well. And one of the reasons to remove negativity is also to avoid burnout. And one, one way to avoid burnout will be the next point that is to relax on the day before the exam instead of trying to cram in the last minute. Right, these are some of the frequently asked questions and here are the answers. Uh, for dress, like I said before, also the six hour grueling exam, so you have to be as comfortable as possible. Uh, decide on what you want to wear the day before, not on the morning, on the day of the exam. Uh, when picking, you have to see that the ex air conditioning is usually uncertain at the exam halls, so it's better to anticipate that the exam could be warmer than you like or colder than you like, both ways. And then if you're someone who feels cold very easily, take a shawl, sweater, jacket, so 
diet. And then this is an important point. The exam hall is not a place to show off your fashion sense. It's a place to be comfortable and do the exam. So it's most important thing would be to be comfortable and rather worry about your fashion sense. That's an important point to make about dress. And then, like I said before, last thing you study, not recommended. And your pencil should be for level one and two should be number two OHB. And level three, you can take a pen also for the essay section. But this time around, uh, yeah. and for the calculator, there's a there was a question whether you should take two calculators or batteries and the screwdriver to insert the batteries into the calculator. Both are good ideas, but in my case, what I personally do is I took a calculator of a friend and batteries as well, so the extra safe. Try that if you can, but uh, yeah, two calculators should be fine. And then uh, as far as the call of nature is concerned during the exam, I would say it is recommended that you go to the uh, toilets during the exam and not before and after the exam because of the long queues. And this is especially true during the COVID-19 times because you shouldn't be in these long queues, trying to social distance, worrying about whether you'd catch COVID during an exam, right? Uh, so during the exam, there'll be very short queues, probably even no queues. And if you manage your time correctly, you won't have a problem with time and taking a toilet break during the exam. And as far as uh, COVID-19 is concerned uh, and this policy is concerned, this incident has not given an official guidance to us yet. Uh, here are some links for you to click on once you get the once you get the slides, so you have the personal belongings policy like this, you can read on. And they are also on the CFH website. And we have an unofficial source at 300hours.com, which we highly recommend. That's it. Uh, we are at the question and answer. Okay, thanks very much, Suranga. Uh, yeah, I'm getting a couple of questions, so if I can respond to them. Uh, also, another point to also emphasize from what Suranga said about being early. So especially this year, I think it's uh, in your best interest to like get early because there might be like extra like health related checking procedures that are involved. Uh, so make sure you get to the uh, exam uh, well ahead of uh, time and, you know, and for the afternoon session also don't, uh, you know, linger around too much, you know, make sure you're in the uh, hall uh, in time for that when, they, when they're starting to admit you. Uh, I'll just read out some of the questions that have come through. Uh, so one is, I think, in terms of the uh, whether you can bring uh, questions on whether you can bring short notes and uh, whether you can keep it in your bag. Uh, so tip, in a typically you can, uh, but uh, I think this time what's different is there won't be a separate area to keep the your bags. So if you're uh, bringing it in, you know, it'll have to be in uh, under your desk. Uh, and probably they, I mean, from what they've recommended is, you know, just take whatever is required, you know, don't go and try to take like textbooks and things like that into the hall. So definitely if you have a few things, I mean, that might be uh, acceptable, uh, but you'll have to keep it in the bag and under your desk uh, during the exam hall. But um, again, the recommendation is, you know, try to keep it to a minimum as fast as possible, because then the checking procedures and all of that is going to just delay everyone. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, so be mindful of that. Uh, I think another question we got uh, is about, uh, do we have a separate sheet to mark our answers? Uh, no, so they, you can use the exam paper itself. So on the exam paper, you can do any markings on that. Uh, and, and that won't be like, they won't look at that in terms of the, the marking and things like that. You know, what they will count is just the, what you're uh, responding on that answer sheet. Uh, so on the exam paper itself, you are free to like mark it uh, as you please. Okay. Um, yeah, in terms of, uh, okay, no, another question that just came in, uh, can we turn off the mobile and keep it in the bag? Uh, yes, I believe that's what you'll have to do. Uh, so usually, again, if it's a bag counter, if there was a bag counter, again, you have to leave the phone with them. Uh, but here, you would have to turn it off and keep it in the uh, bag. Okay, same thing with if you're taking tablets and things like that, uh, you know, you'll have to switch it off. But again, best is, you know, try as much as possible to take the minimum. Uh, with you. 
uh, in terms of lunch, uh, again, it would uh, um, uh, probably they would have set aside some space for where you can have your lunch uh, because this time you won't be able to um, uh, to what they've said is to bring your own uh, packed lunch. Okay, so yeah, so probably they would have made some arrangement for uh, for you to uh, have your lunch. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the questions that have come in at the moment. Uh, so until uh, so please do send in more questions as it comes in. Uh, so maybe while we wait for more, I'd like also to invite. Uh, we also have uh, Richie uh, and uh, Nabiha from uh, the uh, the candidate council uh, who'd also like to share some uh, thoughts with you. Um, so Nabiha, would you like to go first? Oh, Nabia doesn't seem to have responded. Uh, Richie, are you there? Would you like to share anything? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, hi, guys. So first of all, I, I would like to uh, wish good luck to all you guys for the exam. And uh, yeah, so I think Suranga has covered pretty much uh, all the uh, tips and necessary uh, you know, uh, steps that should be taken, especially during the exam day and before the exam day. So just like you mentioned, uh, I think Ideally, by now, you guys should be mostly practicing on questions and things like that. Plus, um, uh, especially one day before the exam day, don't try to, you know, uh, you know, try to learn anything new or uh, sort of like, you know, spend too much time on it, like have a good rest. Because just like you mentioned, uh, it's a six hour paper and, you know, you need a lot of, uh, uh, you know, like uh, rest for you to answer it. So try to, you know, get enough rest and sleep and uh, especially follow these procedures and getting to the exam on time is very important because uh, just like Travis mentioned, usually itself, there, there are a lot of procedures, but when it comes to uh, this time, because of the, you know, the fact that uh, there, are, there is like more precautions that they take. So I think it's good if you guys can, you know, uh, get there on time as well as, uh, you know, uh, and the other thing is plan your lunch well. You know, like don't try to take something which you would get like sleepy or something because generally what happens is just after the first paper, uh, there is always a tendency that you get too tired and stuff because you already have answered a three-hour paper. So try to balance it, you know, and also it's good. I, I would advise just before the exam, if you can, maybe over this week, try maybe a six-hour paper, like do a mock and see just to see how you, uh, I mean, how like just like how the exam conditions are going to be. So that uh, you, because normally we have this uh, mock exam in person, but since we couldn't have it this time, I think it's good if you guys can try it on your own and see uh, how, you know, the situation is for you guys. Yeah, Travis, that's it from my end. And uh, all the best everyone for the exams. Do well. Okay, thanks a lot, Richie. Um, uh, yeah, I would also emphasize on that point about, uh, you know, basically, uh, I mean, this is the time that you should really be practicing questions. Uh, so I think if you all had, uh, I believe, um, uh, signed up for the mock exams, I believe we should still have access to them as well. Uh, so, you know, so even like, even if you repeat it, you know, it's good to like get into that mentality, you know, to practice as much questions as possible. Uh, because I would advise also last minute, don't try to learn anything new, you know, just consolidate what you have learned and, uh, you know, be sure that you're very uh, comfortable with it. Uh, and the point about lunch as well, I would also say, you know, because, you know, this is a time candidates might get very nervous. So, you know, you know, Take something that, uh, you know, it won't, um, uh, you know, as uh, Richie said, you know, you, you, it won't make you feel sleepy. Uh, but definitely, I would also, uh, uh, you know, not advise, you know, don't try to skip lunch as well. Because this is a six-hour exam. You need that energy to continue for another three hours. Uh, so that's also, I would say, something to be uh, mindful of. Uh, Nabiha, are you there? Uh, do you have anything else to share with the candidate? Uh, yeah, I think until Nabiha joins, maybe I think a uh, few other questions that came in. Do we have? Okay, yeah, this is something that uh, I think candidates also uh, I feel get confused sometimes about um, when it comes to the answer sheet, whether you how to cut uh, when it comes to uh, responding to that. So what you will get uh, is like a sheet with like, you know, since it's an MCQ paper, you'll have the numbered questions as well as the, the three options, uh, A, B and C in little circles. Uh, so you need to color it in. Okay, and just make sure that you color it in thoroughly so that it so that the full uh, circle is uh, fully covered. Uh, because uh, basically, a lot of these 
the papers will be machine marked. So make sure you uh, clearly color it in. And that's why they emphasize the specific pencils to also use basically a dark pencil. So, so when you're, uh, corre so if you need to make any changes or things like that, make sure that you clearly erase it. And then before that too, uh, and then uh, color it in. Okay, because there might be then some problems with the marking. Uh, so in situation like this, what I uh, would also recommend is that, uh, you know, first to mark the things, um, you know, pick your answers on the paper itself. And, you know, maybe put an indication on the question, you know, questions where you're very sure that this is the answer, you know, maybe you can put a tick mark uh, next to that. Uh, questions which are more uncertain, you know, just keep like a question mark or something and mark it. And then later when you're going to fill in the answer sheet, uh, you know, leave those till the end or, you know, uh, until you're like, uh, you're, you finalize on an answer, you know, uh, because best is don't try to like keep, uh, you know, erasing and then uh, marking again on the answer sheet because it, it might become, you know, if you keep like repeating it, uh, it might become illegible. Uh, so just uh, try to be mindful of that as well. So, you know, coloring in the color in the full box, uh, the full circle. Uh, also, you, know, you don't get any extra time to mark the answers. It, it's within that three hours. So make sure you, um, uh, so make sure that you, uh, you know, don't, uh, you know, forget to do that and don't leave that till the last minute uh, as well to mark those. Okay. So it's within those three hours that you need to mark those. Travis? Yes. There was a question I think we missed. Uh, there was a question asked whether the exam proctors give, uh, give them uh, blank sheets to do calculations. Okay. Yeah, I think we took that up. So that was, uh, no, you don't get any blank sheets. No, uh, you have to, do, yeah, you'll have to do it on the exam paper itself. So on the exam paper, I think some sides there might be like a blank side to it. So you can use that or, you know, wherever, uh, you know, next to the question or whatever, you can uh, do those markings. Okay. Uh, yeah, does anyone have any other questions for us? Uh, yeah, it seems. Uh, okay, there's one question. Uh, say I started a module FRA. Can I come back to it later? Uh, to the computer uh, yes. Uh, so uh, in terms of the computer-based one, I think there, uh, I believe the CFA Institute will also be having an information session. Uh, I believe they are uh, planning one, uh, I think in, uh, I think on the 7th or on the 9th, uh, we will let you know further details about that. Uh, and uh, uh, I think at the moment they haven't given a specific uh, uh, advice in terms of how the, uh, the computer-based exam, the procedures will be for that. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I think we will share with you any information that we get on that. Uh, so most probably before, well ahead of the exam, probably the CFA Institute will have some uh, sort of uh, 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 give some information on that, as well as I believe what they said was that uh, before the uh, on the day of the, you know, if, if it comes to a computer-based exam, uh, there will be a couple of uh, sort of like sample questions that will be given to you as well, uh, so that you're familiar with whatever the software or the, uh, the the procedures for answering that. So, but from what the CFA Institute has said, they want to make it as similar as possible to the paper-based one uh, in, in this first year, because when we are making this transition from the paper-based to the computer-based one, so because of that, uh, they've kept the curriculum the same and they want it to resemble a typical paper-based exam as much as possible. Uh, so that's what um, uh, we've been told. Uh, then, okay, another question about, uh, we are not allowed to open up. Yeah, you won't be able to open your bags uh, during the exam. So, uh, so anything, so yeah, so if there's anything you need to take like medication, uh, you need to keep it on your table or, or like on the side or somewhere, you know, outside of your bag. So you can't be, uh, I believe you won't be able to reach into your bag during the exam. So if there's any medicine you need to take, whatever, uh, you need to uh, keep it uh, on your table or on the side or something.
uh, and I believe this time in terms of water as well. So usually there is like um, they usually have like water dispensers and things like that. But I think this year uh, there won't be water at the venue. So you'll have to bring your own. Uh, and I believe what they've also said is it has to be like in a sealed bottle um, or basically you have to bring your own. Um, yeah, I don't think there's any more questions. And yeah, I think we had planned this uh, session for a 30 minute session. And but if you have any more further questions, uh, you can uh, always reach out to us, uh, you know, and um, uh, let me also before you go, please do um, uh, uh, send in your uh, uh, feedback on this session on the feedback form and on that you'll be able to uh, also uh, get the um, uh, the uh, notes uh, from the session. So let me just uh, put that on the chat uh, right now. Yeah, so everyone, uh, so please take a minute to fill out that form. Uh, and so, you know, just give us some uh, feedback on how, on whether was this session useful and, um, um, you know, uh, if this is something we can, what we can do to sort of improve this uh, in the future. Uh, so, yeah, so I would also like to wish everyone all the very best. Uh, from everyone, so everyone here at the candidate, uh, candidate council. Uh, I mean, we've, uh, we've understood that you know this year has been very um, uh, a challenging year, uh, but we uh, you know also would like to uh, give our fullest support uh, and try as much as possible to help out the candidates, uh, to, you know, to make sure that you uh, do well uh, at the exam. Okay. So best of luck to everyone on this. Yes, good luck, good everyone. Luck, everyone. Uh, yes. Uh, Nabia, sorry, uh, you, uh, would you like, is there anything you want to share with the candidates? Uh, sure, yeah. I mean, everything was pretty much covered uh, um, and touched on. But um, just to add on to what everyone said, yeah, just be calm on the exam day. And um, also, when you have your break, I suggest strongly not to uh, chit-chat with your buddies on um, the exam questions only because you know you need to go in with a fresh mind for part two so use that time to just relax and unwind and enjoy your meal but otherwise good luck happy st studying towards this last week the end of your marathon and yeah wishing you guys all the very best you can do it thank okay, you Travis thanks. thank you so much yeah, thanks very much, Navya, and thanks everyone. Thanks, Richie Suranga, for the great presentation and insights. Uh, and uh, yeah, so thanks everyone, and wish you all the best. And as I said before, you go. Uh, I've shared on the chat the feedback form, uh, so please uh, respond to that, and you'll be able to get the notes, uh, the the presentation slides as well. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.